the lawsuit, et cetera. What they did, they will carry out preliminary reports. This is title reports, and that is the title. We're just going to go through this, not to get long class, I promise, not to draw it out like last month's class. Um, but it's going to be very good for you because these are items you guys need to be aware of on the freeway. Unfortunately, I shouldn't say unfortunately, that's going to be up to John and you to clear all these items. But you guys need to be aware of them because typically you'll be getting the treatment ahead of time for your clients and they're going to say, let's all just cut off that. So we'll just go through this one by one. You guys have okay. Yes. No, we have a front and back. No, we do not have a package. No. Just a one sheet. Oh, the, the slides printed. Well, well we can do the, the slides. But they should have a copy as well. Why well, do we get that printed out? Yeah, or a PDF? Oh, yeah, we can send out PDFs. We can send out PDFs. What was that? Okay, so when you guys order, when you get a treaty, we're always going to ask for the treaty. You know what that is? Hyperlink? Hyperlink is when you get a treaty, you're going to see uh, the recording instrument number highlighted in blue. All you have to do is click on that and it'll bring up what that reportable document is. Okay. A lot of people are not aware of that. You want to see what the actual item is, it's going to be in that hybrid. Okay. So let's start off. You can forget this anatomy. Go to the third page, please, Jonathan. On schedule A3. You're going to have. You have two different types of problems. And I should have learned this when you uh, took your BRE, BRE class. You have key simple, which means you own the problem. And then there's the lease hold. Lease holds are not very big. Uh, you'll see a lot of lease holds out in uh, the deck on screens, but check it out. Part of it's uh, owned by the uh, Affairs, so you lease it for 99 years, but you don't have to make a copy. Somebody made a pair of Is that the same thing like in Hawaii? Where? Is Hawaii does have a lot of lease options yeah. as well, correct? Many of the states do. They're not on here except for here. Okay. But most of you, you know, home springs don't have that. So you may have clients out there. Sure. You'll need to know about these things, the difference between fee simple and lease hold. Okay. Fee simple, you're going to see that. You can buy it, it's going to be there for us. Okay. You said B or B? B. F E. F E. Oh, F E. Did you advance for a favor? Okay. So you're going to have when you get a pre this is going to be everything that is reported against the property, whether it's theirs or not. And I'll explain that as we go along. Okay, so at the very top, you're going to have your uh, health title adjuster. We went through that over the last class. If you recall, I do health title. That's how. The owner of the property is the title to the property. And you're going to have them schedule the taxes. You're going to have all of the taxes for your current year. So currently, we're in 2020, 2023, 2024 property taxes. As I explained last month, taxes are done. Um, a fiscal year does not run from January to December. Okay. A fiscal year runs from July 1st of this year to the first installment of 2023. Your second installment is going to run from January through June of the following year. That's why you'll see two different years on the tax table. Um, so this is going to show what taxes are currently due. If, if the seller is in default, they haven't 
pay the taxes in the three years. The county is going to go into default and record that against the property. Now, after seven years, the county can take the property back. So, so what we're going to do is we are going to prorate through escrow based on the current installment taxes. So right now, uh, first installment is 2023. For example, we're closing escrow December 1st. This period runs from July 1st through December 1st. So you can debit your seller from July 1st to December 1st at the close of escrow. You have credit to your buyer that last month, December 1st to December 31st. You guys follow me? Mm -hmm. And then the buyer's going to pay the entire six months. Okay, so that's how that's going to work. Um, next, sir. Sorry, the buyer has to pay the defaults of tax? No. no, no sorry. Oh, the seller. Oh, seller got it. Now. I'm talking about regular tax. Okay. okay. Now, also, if there are supplemental taxes, current supplemental taxes and old supplemental taxes, you may have supplemental taxes when the buyer first purchased property. And they never, you're going to get a supplemental tax bill within three months after you close. Okay. County assessor is going to reassess the property um, and they're going to send you a buyer and you can pay that. A lot of times people don't pay that. So two years down the line, when they're going to sell the property, we're going to uh, have to pay those from the seller's proceeds. Now, if the buyer is going to an investor, they purchase it six months later, they're selling it, and you have those supplemental taxes, we're going to prorate the current supplemental taxes. Okay. Not any old ones that the seller can use, but the current ones because it's been reassessed. So we're going to reassess it on the regular taxes and the new supplemental taxes. What are examples of uh, supplemental taxes? They're always going to be a supplemental. It's like a city tax or a county, no, county tax. County tax. County tax. So okay. when we close that mm -hmm. with the grantee, we sell what's called the preliminary change of ownership report, the PCOR. That goes to the county uh, along with the, the grant back and forth. Mm -hmm. That's going to tell you what the purchase price is, how much the down, who the buyer is, blah, 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 blah. The county assessor is going to reassess the property tax once again. Based on the new property, on the new value. So, tax, they're always going to get a, a supplement. Um, we had a deal that closed two months back. Uh -huh. If you look at the escrow instructions, I have it in great big bold, and people never read it, but I expand it and bold it with its information to the buyer on the property tax. Because a lot of people are not aware. Oh, I never got a tax bill, I don't have to pay it. You know, you want to know your tax when they come due. If you don't have them, you can contact the county tax collector to get a due to the bill. Um, you guys know the tax dates? Yes. Sir. June the Lincolns. Maya, you know your tax dates when you do when you're delinquent? Are you asking if you have? <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot. Oh, yeah. Do I know where it is? Melanie, do you know? Uh, February something in April. April. Okay. So very good. Yeah. Your first installment is due November 1st, delinquent December 10th. The first installment, but remember, taxes are not the fiscal year is when it's tax tax or Now, when they pay those taxes that come due November 1st, most of May 5th, so then December. Taxes, most everything in real estate, you pay in arrears. You don't pay in advance. Okay, a lot of people get that confused. They think they're paying their taxes. 
taxes on December 10th, the kids are paying it in advance. You're not going to pay it by first and December 10th. Just like on your mortgage payments. Okay, with the loan, when you made your December 1st payment, that's for the month of November. You're not paying in advance. Okay, a lot of people are not aware of that. In real estate, most everything is done in advance. So, um, your second installment is due February 1st, April 10th. So, we go to April 10th. Mm -hmm. So, those are your tax payments. But there we go. We can talk about supplemental taxes. So, so you're good there. So no tax. Now, uh, go, go back my piece of my chart. Uh, number 22. You're going to see five and six. Those are easements. You guys know what easements are? Mm -hmm. Y'all know them. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. They're going to have uh, easements from the dish network, the utility. Utility, exactly. Utility, the gas company, blah, blah, blah. So these are what is recorded again on the property. Okay. So you don't need to worry about those because those are. Easements that are on the property. Uh, you can flip one more, please, Jonathan. Got a question? No. Nope. Nope. Covenants, conditions, and restrictions. You know what those are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you know what you got. Now, item number eight, 24 and 25. Here is going to be the existing deeds of trust, which are recorded against the property. Typically, this item number A and 8A will be a typical thing, not a big deal. Get paid it off. However, what if all of a sudden you see three additional deeds of trust against the property? The seller's going to we paid that off 30 years ago. Then you have a problem. Is that as a result of a refi? It happens. It happens all the time. Uh, title companies used to just say, okay, we'll get closer to that transaction. We'll wait. They no longer do. So this happens. It happens. Now you had the murders. Okay. NERS? Yeah, NERS. That is, is you go through a system that actually keeps track of the deed of trust all the way through the transaction, including when it's paid off, okay? Including if the loan has been sold. We don't know what's been sold to. You can go to MERS and they find it. The website or MERS.org? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm hard of hearing. Oh, you. is it a website, MERS.org? Yeah, yeah. It yeah. is? Yeah, there's MERS. Is there keep track of the deed of trust? You think the current deeds of trust? Yeah. That's correct. Now, you have an elderly couple. They've owned this home for 40 years. Well, when Bernice and John first bought the home way back when, they got a private loan. When they got at the, the first, when they got a private loan from Uncle, um, what's going to happen then? And Uncle Frederick is going to pay off that loan. It's a private beneficiary. Um, it was paid off twenty years ago. And Uncle Frederick's not yet. Is it an? I thought it said ERS. 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 Uh, I can't see it, but that's M R E S. That's a different website. So um, I can afford the cheapest. Yeah, that would be good. So <laughs> what's going to have to happen now is Uncle, whatever I said his name was, after the loan was paid off, he never reconveyed the existing deed of trust. A lot of private beneficiaries don't know that they need to do that. Okay. When the loan is paid off, you're recording the deed of trust to put the deed on the property. We need another document to take it off. Private beneficiaries happen all the time. They don't know about it. So you 
paid off your loan 20 years later, you can try to sell the property in your uncle's dead. You have to see the trust. Oops, what are we doing? Now you've got a problem. But that's the change you make from the uncle to them? Or? No. Uh, no, 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 I just want to, uh, no, I, yeah. it's good, I just want to explain okay. what you say, no, yeah. um, you bought a property, mm -hmm. okay, your uncle, you need his advice to lend you a big truck in the backyard, your uncle lent you $30,000, okay, you paid that off 20 years ago, mm -hmm. your uncle died 10 years ago, but you paid off that deed of trust, that's recorded against your property. Mm -hmm. Your uncle does not know because most beneficiaries do not know. It doesn't just disappear. Mm -hmm. You have to have documents in place to remove it from the land. Oh, it's called a full will <coughs> raise or a substitution of trustee in the full will. Call it a full will here. Call it what? What's that? So you can call it on. It's called a uh, a full free conveyance okay, full, okay. or a substitution of trustee and a full reconveyance. So a full reconveyance, Uncle Chester's still alive, he can fill it out, do everything. Substitution of trustee and full reconveyance is if you have um, uh, you're going to have somebody who's going to be signing in. Proxy for that individual. It'd be the trustee. You have to have the title. So these documents, if Uncle Chester is now gone, he has no successors, he was never reconveyed, he can't get a zero demand, he can't get a reconveyance on there. Typically, typically you're gonna have to bond around that deed of trust. It's rare that it happens, okay? Um, but you have to do is go to a bonding company. They're going to want funds up front, percentage of, depending on how old the uh, deed of trust is and the amount of the deed of trust. And a bonding company will submit an actual bond, just like when you go to jail. They don't even have to get a bond to get a bailout, okay? Same thing as in real estate. Okay? They're going to hold on to this as for security. Okay? Now, if down the line, five years later, oh, the Chester's not dead. <laughs> they, found, they found him to be. And, you know, um, and he wants that to be paid, then the bonding company, it's like an insurance fund. Then they're going to have to cough up the rest. Okay? So that's basically the hard part on a private beneficiary. Now, if you guys are homeowners, or if you've ever been a homeowner, and you have a loan, and it's always been with you, and all of a sudden you get a surrender a letter, your loan has been sold to Mr. Cooper. You go, huh? I wasn't aware of this. How did that happen? They assign it. They do this all the time. They have. Item number 25. So it used to be with Wells Fargo, they assigned it to Bank of America. Okay, they sold that loan to a mortgage. This happens quite often. And a lot of times, if the loan is really old, it can be sold five, six, seven times. So we're going to track down who the current lender is. Your clients typically will know where they are, unless, you know, it was. Heaven forbid your parents home, so you have both the cities and just you know, it's always been with the bank web control them from time to time. We can find that out who the most people who the new current notice of default. Okay. Going into foreclosure, you haven't paid your mortgage in four months. Okay. 
after the first three months, they're going to, after they've notified the ocean time is behind, blah, 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 they're going to send it. It's going to go to sale. Okay, I'm sorry, it's going to go to default. Here. It's going to go to default after three months. They're going to report it against the property. Now your lien is delinquent. It's in foreclosure. Have another three months to get it out. If you don't, it's going to go to sale. Notice of sale. We always need to be kept on top of that because we need to contact the lenders directly. So if they were an escrow, they sell the property out, they need to be the fine. Don't foreclose on them until they were closed. But we'll need to know all that. Hey there. How are you? Hey, you're fine. So we're going to be like the intermediary that's going to work in the sales on the on their behalf so they don't go ahead and sell the property. So we'll need to know all that. Well, wait a minute. No, wait. No, what do you mean if you would need to know all that? I mean, um, so we'll need to know who the lender is. We'll need to know who they're in contact with because once it goes into default, you're going to have uh, an individual from that bank, from that institution, is going to reach out to you. It's now going to be like your uh, service provider that's going to be talk to you. Yeah, so how, so how does this relate to like when we get these, uh, uh, these, um, notice of default? Yeah, these notice of default and we're calling them. You know, how, yeah. how, how, how does that relate? I mean, that's well, we'll need to let the existing lender know because the time is clicking day by day. Okay. Um, and if it's not paid in full within six months, they're going to take the property back. Because that three months go to default, another three to go to sale. So I'm saying that we contact one of these people off this default list. Are you talking about the bank or the institution? No, the list that they give us the call. Some yeah. of the uh, is full, some of the notes are yeah. default, some expire, some of the three months. Absolutely. Then, yes, you'll need to ask your clients, your sellers. Sure. Are you running into any problems? Are you default? Is there any money on the property? Have we need to know? We'll find that out as soon as you want to bring in if it is reported that you're going to be on there. What do we need to know? Because now we need to get involved and get in contact with Bank of America and say, wait a second, you know, it's supposed to go to sale next month. We're in escrow right now. We need to know that's the plan. They'll work with us. They'll work. Okay. They will work with us knowing that um, that the property's in escrow. If they want to get the full payment, sure. typically if, if it goes to sale, then we they have to sell it at a discount. Yeah. So they'll work with us. Okay. So that's what that's going to be for. Oh, okay. Okay. <clears throat> you guys haven't paid your income taxes five years. You haven't paid your taxes, you haven't paid your franchise tax board. You think that's just going to pay you a few minutes? Everything you want. Yeah. Okay. So, Priorities on the Who's the first priority? You guys know? IRS. IRS. Franchise tax board is going to be number two. There's a rear lien, which I'm sure you've heard of it, which if you're automatically looking for then it's going to be the existing member of the property you're on. You know what it is? Mechanics. Mechanics? Mechanics. And so you can knock out the first. Now you're going to have the IRS, franchise tax board, and then the vendor, the builder, the provider on that tax mechanics. You guys all know what mechanics is, right? Challenge contractor. Exactly. We had work done on the property, we had walls built, we had new rooms, they had lumber, they had uh, uh, drywall, they had cement that was in. They never paid. They're going to report it mechanically on the property. Then all of a sudden, 
they go up the way up the chart over to this. Okay. I really funny about those systems and I they want a lot of paperwork in order to close all those. Abstract and judgment. You guys have American Express, Citibank, Wells Fargo Credit Card. Those credit card companies, they know where you live, et cetera. They can report what's called an abstract of judgment to what's financial. They close down your credit card. They want to get paid. Well, how do they know that? How do they know it that happens? Well, <laughs> not too hard to find out. Yes? Is that why some people put their homes like in an LLC to hide from the, that? Yeah. So they can go bankrupt or something? Yeah. Uh, LLC, yeah. Can that sh shelter it or shield it? Well, it, 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 but they eventually get it anyway. They right? eventually but get it anyway. You still have to pay taxes under an LLC. Okay. So they can kind of defer that. Yeah. Um, but under an LLC, the chances are. I'm still going to ask if you're under an LLC or oh. not under an LLC, under a trust. They're still going to ask for statements of information. Hmm. You know, PSI card. Document that title is going to require from both buyers and sellers. Whether they lived for the past 10 years, what their name is, where were they born, what's their birthday, their social security number, their drive. They're going to get really, they're going to get clients out of here. You're really pissed off. Why do they need to know all my information? I don't want to provide that. Well, you know what? They're insuring the property. Yeah, they sure can. I trust for that. You know, another thing. We discussed this last month as well. If you have California is the largest state by population by far. Mm -hmm. One out of every eight Americans lives in California. Oh. Okay. So <clears throat> what does this mean? The title's insurance property. So you have a lot of uh, John Smiths. Maria Garcia, uh, John Chen, the way common names, okay? You get a freedom, you see all these leanings in the field. That's not me until it freaks out. That's not me. Every lean and judgment you guys have that's recorded is going to have some personal information on that client. Either the last four of the social, the driver's license number, and it's the recording box. The title is going to look at the statement of information and say, oh, they never lived in Beverly Hills, or that's not the social security number. These are how they uh, reduce, how they take off all of those things that may be against the common names. Okay? So, <clears throat> going back to the abstract of judgment, you may see that, and it might not be there. So this is how we're going to clean it. Now, if it is there, we need to order a payoff payment. You're going to have really pissing the seller saying, well, yeah, 10 years ago, how did they, you know, I didn't want to pay that, that club. Well, you know what? I think that's recorded in his office. Yeah, you have to pay that. So she filed for bankruptcy and was wiped out. You're still liable for that. Can that get plugged out through escrow? In other words, with, uh, Taken out of the seller's purse. Yeah, we'll, we'll pay that at close. Okay, so you see your seller's settlement statement. Yeah. You're going to have all your probation, et cetera, your taxes, uh, your payoff on the purse. You didn't have to abstract and you pay. It's going to be not that. You're going to be out of your purse. Okay. okay, so you live in a condo project. You have not paid your HOA fees. <laughs> Should they have slap on the lien against the property? They shouldn't have mm -hmm. Absolutely. And if you're behind, a lot of times your, your title officers are going to want a copy of the demand stating uh, that they're either current or if they're not, they're going to want some hours of the statement showing up with any of with the demand and a copy of our settlement that have been paid. Okay. 
Item number three. Uh, I'm sorry, 30. 30, 11. Can I tell you? Yeah. Notice of violation. There can be all kinds of leads and judgment based on all kinds of things. All sorts of things. So you live on, you live over in Highland Park. You want to see your lights, okay? You live on a hill. But we live in Southern California. Get all the rain in winter and you have all the growth happening in, in summer dries out. You never need it again. You never let it down. Then you come in and say, boom, it's raining. Or pour something against the property. Wow. You could be for numerous things. You could have um, you could have a fence. Okay, you could have more. Yeah. Fell over into the neighbor's yard and you never fixed it. Okay. Building and safety is going to come in and they're going to tag you for that as well. Okay. So, a lot of these things are not common, but you will see them. All right. You will see a lot of these things. So, we will have to go to building and safety and get a demand from them. They're either going to want us financial compensation or financial compensation and you have to have a shed, whatever the issue is. You know, you have a shed in the back, it's all rotted and over the line and fell down. That's a safety hazard. So it's like, well that's in my backyard. It doesn't matter if it's if it's a violation of someone else, if somebody else can be hurt, then yes, it has to be taken care of. These are very real things that you as new agents or fairly new agents you not, might not be aware of, but you need to be aware of. Now, if you guys will continue to go through here, but let me just say this now. If you guys, even if we're not escrow, you see a free room, Jonathan, what is this? I don't see, you know, or David, what is this? And I'll say, we don't need to have, we want, we want you guys to grow, okay? And if we have that escrow or not, we still want to help you. So, if there's anything that just shows up on the free room that you're not comfortable with, or that you want assistance with, and you don't know what it is, give me a call, or give Jonathan a call. You know, we're more than happy to help you. We want to help you, we want to walk you through that. <coughs> Okay, we already went through the notice of default, 26 to 27. <laughs> notice of default that was um, recorded. <laughs> In February, a year later, for some reason, the, the lender actually worked with the seller, but they didn't pay off. So, a year later, they foreclosed on the property. Okay. They took the property back. 28, we already went through. 29, 30, we went through. And the IRS, same thing. You're going to have your priorities. All of these are not always going to show up on freelance. Most of these do not show up on this class is just to let you know, sometimes you're going to see someone had problems. That was all for thought. You know, they did trouble with time on their uh, condominium HOA dues, and they had to pay their taxes for two years, and they declined on their mortgage payments. Then these are the things that are popping up. Okay. Um, so again, you have your priorities. My U.S. is going to be at the top. They don't care who you are. They don't care how rich you are. They don't care how poor you are. They don't care what you have. They don't care if you're going to be sleeping on the floor. That's just the IRS. Unfortunately, they suck. Um, franchise tax board, same thing. They're not going to, they don't care. Um, then, of course, your mechanic liens, if you have a mechanic lien, That'll pop up, that'll be a third priority. Then your lender, 
going to be enforced by the end. Okay. So these are just very simple, basic things. That's it. It wasn't going to be really long, but I wanted to give you guys the basics on a really ugly uh, prelim. And can you say it's going to be salvaged? And you know what happens to this? So look at all these other things. You can't do it all the time. Um, you just have to jump in and do it a lot. Uh, that's also like a judgment too. Like the judgment will tell you if it's uh, child support or what it is. Okay, judgment from the county. You'll only see it if it's in the state of California. Okay. Uh, if we're, they're not going to search it yet outside the state, it's highly illegal. But you, it may have been recorded in San Mateo County. You think, oh, okay, great. Well, I'm in Southern California now. They're not going to find out yet. Yeah, so, in California, we need to get your children caught up. Current, plain and simple. Mm -hmm. right? They don't care if you're on the street either. <laughs> you're dead. You're taking care of your kids. And this is should be. As it should be. Yeah. And it's child abuse. It's not a mm -hmm. uh, And the like delinquency on the credit card, if mm -hmm. you go through one of those, um, like debt relief programs where they negotiate it for yes. you, is that still going to show up in your history, right? Um, or would that no, that will show up in your history with your credit card, right? But it won't be recorded. Okay. Here. If they have something recorded on here, you've gone into a, a, a prepayment plan, mm -hmm. they lump them all together and yeah, you know, paying 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 400, 400, yeah, and then chop that down. That's going to be removed off of here. That's or removed. If, or if it's not, mm -hmm. then you just need to have a copy of your uh, prepayment plan mm -hmm. full time. Got it. Okay, time to spend on the copy. Okay. So, yes, ma'am. Sorry, random question. Do you know the maximum amount of time someone can be bankrupt? I heard it's 12. No. Is that correct? Seven. Be bankrupt? Is seven? Nine. Or do you buy it in? Yes. Seven years. Seven, seven years, but how many times in seven? You can only go bankrupt. Oh, you can go bankrupt every seven years. Okay. But if you file it seven years later, you, nobody's going to, uh, they're not going to get a home again until that seven years has passed. Unless you buy from an LLC. Mm -hmm. Unless you buy from an LLC, right? Or, so or either. It, it, exactly. Under under there are certain circumstances, okay. unless you pay cash or, you know. How about a short sale? Sure. Do you know how they, they work? Well, that plus how long are you on your record payments? Uh, short sales are going to be on typically five to seven years. Okay. So that so is all know what short sales are? Not really. Sort of. Yeah. So, so basically, the 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 house present value is less than what the owner uh, owes on the property. That, 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 that could be, but not all. Okay. The owner's having. Uh, a problem, you know, they need to get rid of the house, they can't afford it any longer, etc. You have a new buyer, the buyer will accept X amount of dollars, uh, the, the lender will accept X amount of dollars from the new buyer, okay? So let's say their loan is, um, the property's worth $500,000 and their loan is 300000 that they currently owe on the property. The uh, lender, if they agree to it, and short sales uh, will probably start going into short sales quickly yeah. over the next year, mm -hmm. just so you know. Right. Once you, the market gets this way, mm -hmm. we'll have another class on that. Um, they'll take it for, uh, they'll accept the new buyer just to get their loan paid off. They don't care about the actual equity of the property, they just want their loan paid off. That would be a short sale, but if you have to move this, um, the property is no longer. Yeah, it's upside down. Exactly, it's upside down. Um, AITDs. This might sound like a new one to you guys. Some of you guys may not even be aware of this. It's been around for years. They're not common, but now with the market as they are, with the market as it is, 
choose the self. Yes. Yeah. Self of you. Right. The lungs to my name. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So therefore, for the highest, all the property that she sold to me. Okay. Yeah. Well, so her practice, and also the her learning center was going to be the big one here. And also, that's what was called. I had my head and it was for her. They were both that. So that relationship needs to be somebody that you're comfortable with. Yeah. You know, not just John Bill, but oh, you know, my niece and nephew, they just got married and they got right. really good jobs and they're going to help me out here. So in that scenario, I mean, how would they not know? Because isn't the rent being, being recorded? Aren't they aware of what's going on? They're not even not aware. Really? really? Oh. Okay. Okay. And the buyers are incentivized to buy her loan because she has a low interest rate. That's and that's right. That is Absolutely. now. They're just like getting Absolutely. out Absolutely. property rent control. Absolutely. Is that She's got a loan at three and a half percent. You're buying her cheap loan. Okay, got I got a new loan. Yeah. Is that yeah. still warding seller care to go with the deed? Um, seller care does me. Okay. Okay. Sell it, carry that is I'm selling you the product. You're selling me the product. And you're taking out, we're paying everything, paying me a day off. But you're going to carry back a, a first or a second or whatever it might be. Uh, then we'll prepare the note to trust in your favor, secure your loan. Okay. And that's a sell it, carry back. Two different loans. So yes, very good point. Yeah. That happens too. I mean, or you have a VA loan. Yeah. Oh gosh, VA loans, you know. I'm trying to do my my refi through, through my VA. Yeah. I have a conventional one right now. Okay. But with the VA, we don't have to pay me a month. Yes. That's a lot of money. Three, four, five hundred bucks extra a month. Yeah. Okay. Well, with the VA, it's not kind of bad right now. It's kind of kind of because I've got a real Low interest rate, yeah, yeah, three point seven five percent. You know, I can't refinance or I can't afford to put it in HELOC or the first or second TD or whatever. Um, but you're correct. So a lot of people have to have low interest rates. Oh, you know what? This is perfect. We'll wrap it all inclusive, we trust. Um, must be recorded. And then uh, you're assuming, I'm assuming her loan at three and a half percent. So, so in that scenario, what's her motivation? Because she, 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 she can't afford you know, to do loan anymore. I want to go back to the Yeah. She wants to go back to the room because you know what? Uh, I had another. Or I'm gonna go. Uh, or I'm gonna money. go and fight. Or I'm gonna go fight. Yeah. You know? yeah. uh, you? She can't be here. Oh, whatever. Right, right, right. Okay. She needs, she needs to leave. Yeah. She doesn't want the responsibility. She's not gonna be in the property. Yeah. Quick. She's gotta be gone in three weeks. Is there a version of the of this for um, property tax rates? What do you mean a version of what? The AITD. What do you mean property tax rates? Um, because like for example, my dad has a house. Yeah. His property tax rate is protected under Prop 13, which yeah. keeps his property tax low. So say he gives the house to me. Is there a way I could assume you get title you and get his property tax yes. rate, or would they reassess? If he needs to do, you can do. Is it a parent to child? You can do parent to child, uh -huh. child to parent, um, a grandparent to child, and um, so parents and grandparents. Yeah, that's well, it's a new thing that they just discussed that it's 14. Uh, hmm? it's uh, I saw a video on it, I think it's something 14. I you know, um, I was just looking at that, you know, the fact. Like where you can pass down the property through your generations.
Absolutely. And um, what I'm trying to think of the name of it, I think it's something 14. Oh, that's a different one. Um, no, what he does is a lot of different stuff. Yeah, but they were trying to stop it. Uh, they were trying to make the newer uh, people pay a higher tax than the original uh, family tax. Uh, that's yeah. the draw. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 Your husband is like, I know, super tall. Yeah. 